Let's say you want to knit a hat, and not something really sophisticated, just, uh, you know, a one by one hat, like, you know, one knit, one pearl, one knit, one pearl, something like this. And maybe also on your grandmother's needles, because you're not sure how to attach and close for a circle. Well, how do you do that? Well, first you have to knit a um, sample, a swatch. Um, and then after you do it, you have to bind off, and then you have to soak it in water, and then you have to block it, and then you have to measure the gauge, and then you have to calculate how many stitches do you need to cast on. Well, confusing? Luckily, I've made a whole video taking you step by step through this whole process so that when you come to this video, you know exactly how many stitches to cast on. But if you're too lazy to make your own swatch and find out your true size, you can just follow along with me and knit exactly as I knit um, 55 centimeters around the head, that's the size. And 21 and a half inches, let's go! Okay, so you're gonna cast on now. Wait a sec, let me go back to normal speed. There we go, hi. All right, so we're gonna cast on now um, the amount of stitches that you need. I'm gonna cast on 55 stitches on these beautiful needles, which are six millimeter needles, or for US size, US four, however you say it. And I'm gonna cast on the amount of stitches either for the swatch where I swatch 15 stitches and for the hat itself I cast on 55 stitches. So decide what you wanna do right now. Just make sure you have an odd number of stitches. And we're gonna start by casting on. And let me do it real slow for you, for those who don't know how to cast on for a second. So I start with a long tail cast on, make this loop, yeah, and I keep a long tail, and the tail I put around my thumb, the rest which is attached to the yarn around my finger, and I hold like this, you see, like this, like this, yep. And you see how I hold with my fingers? So when I spread, it's actually stretching. And now I take the needle and put it underneath this loop, you see, underneath the loop of the thumb, in between the, the threads and I grab the thread of the finger and I pull it through the loop and now when I put my thumb down and stretch the yarn actually the stitch is becoming tight on the needle but not too tight make sure you're not doing it too tight again underneath the, the thumb loop grab the finger loop and pull through stretch again And there we go, we already have some stitches, so keep on going exactly like this until you have the right amount of stitches. And now I'm gonna show you how to knit the one by one rib. See ya! And here I have the right amount of stitches that I want for what I'm showing. And yeah, I turn the work and I start the one by one rib. So I'm gonna Purl the first stitch. So first of all, in order to purl it, I need to bring the front, the yarn to the front, and I go from the front, grab it. Let's do it slow from the front of the loop, grab and around the needle, pull it through, and take it off the left. And now I'm going to knit. So the yarn goes to the back, and I go from front to back, grab the yarn, pull it through. Now let's show it when I'm with my right hand, so you can see how I have to move the yarn. So you saw, I moved it to the front. From back to front, brought the needle around and out. And then take the yarn to the back. From front to back, to knit. And then around the needle, pull it through. And take the yarn to the front and purl. Take the yarn to the back and knit. And I continue like this and because we have an odd number of stitches, you have to finish with a purl as well. And that indicates that you have the right amount of stitches, that you didn't make any mistakes. And this is row number one. Okay, when you finish, turn it and I'll show you how to continue with row number two. So I finished row number one, I turn the project and I'm gonna start. 
by knitting into the first stitch, so from down to up I knit, bring the yarn over to the front and purl, bring the yarn back and knit, bring the yarn to the front and purl, and I'm gonna repeat this, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, until one stitch before the end, and I'm gonna knit the last stitch. And this is actually the right side, all right? Row two is the right side, not like usually. Ah, okay. And now I'm gonna show you what happens if you had to leave your work, go to the side, and then you come back and you forgot what was the last stitch that you made, if it was a purl stitch or a knit stitch. Okay, so what do you do? So let's say I came back now and I look at my work. Of course, it has to be um, where it's facing me, the work. And I look at the stitches and you see this stitch right here is kind of a loop and another loop is coming out of it. So this is a knit stitch. I'll have to knit this loop. You see this one? And right besides it, you see, it doesn't look the same at all. It's like this kind of crossover thread. And this is the purl stitch. This is when I see this, I purl. So now I'm going to knit and purl. And I'm just going to repeat these two rows until I have the right length. So if you're already knitting the hat, you just knit these two rows until two centimeters after the length that you want okay, or half an inch, just to be on the safe side. Make sure that you finish with row one, finish with row one, okay? So last time, knit row one and then don't knit row two. And we'll meet there. So there we go, uh, this is the final piece. I have knit uh, 22 centimeters, which are nine inches of this rib, and I finished with row number one. All right, so this is what it looks like. It's very nice. Just make sure that you measure it into the upper part of your head um, and that it's right. Okay, and now I'm gonna do this um, reducing or decrease row. All right, so the right side is facing me now. I'm gonna knit the first stitch. And from now on, I'm going to knit two together. So I go into both of these stitches together, both stitches from the knit stitch, which is in the front, always the knit stitch in the front. And I knit both of these stitches together. And again, knit both stitches together. And again, two stitches together. And I continue all the way till the end of this row. So two stitches together all the way to the end. And I'll see you there. And there we go. I'm on the end of the row. The last knit two uh, together. Yay. And I finish this row. Great. So all we have, what we have to do is to finish this thing and make it into a hat. So I take the yarn that is left and I measure, make sure that it's four times the length of the work that I'm going to seam, that I'm going to sew. One, two, three, four. Yeah, do it precisely, just like I did right now. And then... I'm gonna take 20 more centimeters and cut the edge, put it in this needle, which is a thick needle for wool. And if you're working with um, flat needles, you'll have to slip all the stitches to another needle because you want to go into the opposite side. So not where I went into, from the other side, right? So slip all the needles until you get to the last needle, to the last stitch. Yeah, slip all the stitches till you get to the last stitch. And let's imagine that this is exactly what I did now. And I start to 
go with the needle through all these stitches. So it's the opposite edge of the work. And once I do that, I take them off the needle, right? So here I slip one, take it off, slip two, take it off. All the way till the end of the row. I'll switch to fast mode again for a sec. And we're back to normal speed again. That's the last stitches that I'm passing here, slipping, and that's it. And now I can take this needle all the way through, try to do it gently, you don't wanna break this yarn. And I gently tighten it, gently. Don't break the yarn, but I still want it to be quite tight. Just like this. And from here I'm gonna do the fabulous, glorious mattress stitch, which is actually why I did this video, because I love this stitch. And how to join the two sides, it's just really, really nice. So you see, I have these stitches in between the knit stitches. The first one, this is the first knit stitch. And just, and this is the second one, and just in between I have these threads. All right, you see? So in between these stitches I go into this thread. And right like, like this, under this thread, and pull the needle through. Right, that was the right side. And then I go to the left side and do exactly the same thing. So between the knit stitches, I go through this vertical thread underneath it with the needle and pull through. Oops. Let's put it back on the needle again. Come on, come on, come on. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. There we go. Great. All right, I'm continuing. So I go one thread above, underneath, and just be consistent which thread it is that you're going through. It doesn't really matter if this one or the left one. Yeah, but just be consistent. Try to do it on the right order also and pull through and then to the other side, you see? So just above where I went through last time, one thread above, above it. And then I go to the opposite side and do the same thing. And you want to maybe keep those sides together with pins just to make sure that you don't get the wrong length because it happens that you skip one or not. So if you wanna be more precise. All right, so I'm again going this side pulling the yarn to the opposite side, pulling the yarn. And another thing that I really love about this is that I'm working with the right side turning up. So I can see exactly how I'm proceeding. So in all the other sewing or seaming methods, I can't see how exactly I'm doing. You see, but here I see exactly because I'm working on the right side. And that's perfect. So I continue like this all the way till the end of the edge. And we'll meet there. And there we go, this is the last bit. Really, really the last bit. Just really the last thread, here it comes, here it comes. All the way down. All right, and yeah, I've joined it. Okay, one more, one more, only one more, only one more, I promise. All right, there you go, you see, it's kind of invisible. It's beautiful, isn't it? I love this, I love this way. And now I'm just gonna make this disappear. So how I weave the end in, you see there's kind of this, Con continue, I go into this stitch, right? I want to create this kind of thread, kind of going on. And I go 
just under the next stitch to, to join and back. So I'm kind of imitating the pattern that you have on the top. And now I want to weave in the ends through the wrong side. So I pass the thread through. And basically I could have just go through these parts where I've just seamed, but it's not fun. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you a real fun way. So I go here underneath this knit stitch to the other side, pull the needle through, thank you. And then I go from the side that's close to me to the other side, pull it through, go to the upper knit stitch, do the same thing, pull through. So it's kind of a zigzag thing. And after I've done like four or five of those, I go back one stitch below, pull through, and I repeat a couple of those, maybe three, four of those as well. And yeah, that's it. I'm free to cut my yarn. And you can block the hat. You don't have to, just if you want. You can put a nice pump on if you're like five years old. And there you go, you have your hat with the kind of invisible seam. So if you like me, please let me know. I like when people like me and subscribe and all and tell your friends and blah, blah. See ya!